Okay, good morning and welcome to Yeshiva YouTube being with Ben Sio. And today's daf is the Dharam daf Lamed Hey number 35. A very fundamental machlokas over here about the nature of the Dharam. On Lamed Hey and Aleph. Machlokas between the Rameir and the Chamem. Is there a concept of Me'ila by Konamos? Konamos is another way of saying a neder. Right? We had a machlokas at the beginning of the Masechta. <coughs> Can you make a neder without connecting it to a korban? Without being Konam is another way of saying hektish. Just, it's a kinoi, right? You don't want to say the word hektish because you might say Lashem, the Gemara says. So, therefore, you know, is a nickname. Konam is a nickname you give for hektish. So, according to the Ran, it's possible to have a net there without connecting it to hektish. The rush is only if you connect it to the hektish. Now, the Gemara is talking about a case where you did connect it to hektish. According to the rush, that always has to be like that. According to the Ran, that's the instance, and you're allowed to do that. That's part of a nether. Is it in that instance, right, where you're connecting it to hektish, is it a me'ila? Now, me'ila basically means that something is already given over to the base on mikdash, right? If the animal is, if it's an animal on makdash, as a korban, right, I say this animal should be an ola, right? So that animal itself has to be makrib on the korban. That's called gudusha daguf. Gudusha damim mean I can be makdash anything. I can be makdash this, this, this phone that I'm taking a video from. Makdash my coffee cup. So, but that obviously you're not going to be mak- you're not going to be makrib a coffee cup on the mezbeah, but it has value. And the gizbar, the one who's in charge of the base, will sell it and use the money either to purchase korbanos or to purchase something for the upkeep, upkeep of the base on mikdash. So, the meila generally applies to hektish. Tam kedushas damim belongs either kedushas agu kedushas damim belongs to the base on mikdash. When I use it for my own purposes, so therefore a number of things happen. First of all. It's yotzei lechulin, meaning it loses its as of hektish. Secondly, I have to repay the value to the base on mikdash, and third of all, I have to also give another fifth, the chomish, a penalty of a fifth to the base on mikdash for violating this or of you know benefiting from something which is kadosh. So, what about a case where I say kikari zu alai? This loaf of bread is asra make kikolke hektish konam konam kikari zu alai. So. If you would have said konam kikar zu on everybody, that's really like hektish, right? If I say it, it's only usher to me, so that's not like hektish at all. It's hektish, no one can benefit from it. But here, my friend can benefit. I can't benefit from this loaf of bread. My friend can benefit from it. So it happens to be that my focus are Rameir and the Rabbanan, even in both cases, right? Rameir says, there is me'ila bekonam. So even if I just ask it on myself, and closer again, if I ask it on everybody, the nether. The Rabbanan say, even if I ask it on everybody, the nether, there's no me'ila. Nedarim are totally different than hektish. There's no me'ila. So what's the machlogan? So I want to say the machlogan is about the nature of nedarim itself. I've talked about it, I've alluded to this a number of times. When I take a nether and I say, I'm not going to benefit from a loaf of bread. So am I answering, what, what am I answering with the nether? What am I forbidding with the nether? I'm forbidding to financially benefit from it, or am I forbidding to get pleasure from it? Hana. Hana is a word which we find often in Shas. Um, normally it means when there's something is there achila, you can't eat, right? You can't, you can't eat certain things, you know. You can't eat chazer. Um, there's also is there hana, where you can't get hana, like comments on Pesach, not only can you eat it, you also can get hana. The Gemara in the second paragraph of Pesachim talks about that. Is it is there hana? So, when we talk about Isra or not, does it mean to financially benefit from something like it? Or does it mean specifically to get pleasure from it, right? A lot of times I can financially benefit from something. I can sell something and get money for it. Did I, did I physically benefit from it? I didn't physically benefit from it. However, I financially benefited from it. Sometimes you can have the opposite where you're getting a pleasure from something. I use it to eat. I take a loaf of bread and I eat it. Did I financially benefit from it? Not necessarily. I mean, yes and no. I mean, I don't have to buy another loaf of bread, but is that really called financially benefit? You can, you, can de- you can deliberate about that. So, I think that's a fundamental machlokes in Rameir and the Chavar. Rameir holds that the whole essence of the Dharam is the value of it, financially benefiting from it. That's what a nether is. When I say I'm not going to benefit from a loaf of bread, I'm saying I'm not going to financially benefit from this loaf of bread. And therefore, it's very similar when I connect it to Hakdash, it's very similar to Hektish itself, which is I mean, Makdash, the value to the base of Mikdash. So the base of Mikdash do whatever they want with it. They benefit financially if they can remark about Korban when there's no Korban on the Mizbeach, or they can use her Vedic bias, the upkeep of the base of Mikdash. They're using their financial benefits. That's essentially what Hektish is. But Nadarim, is that like the Nazar? Mayor says it's exactly like it. It's the same thing. 
and according to the Rabbana, no, the essence of a nether is very different. The essence of a nether is to me to get pleasure from something, to get pleasure from something. Now, it's not clear who we hold. Like most postings say, we hold like we're a mayor. There is a meal of Konamos, which we mean basically that the idea of nether is I can't financially benefit from something. Now, once we know that the Malach is like we're a mayor, so what about when I say this loaf of bread is Austrian to me and I eat the loaf of bread? Right? I physically benefit. It tastes good, the bread. Did I financially benefit from it? So I think even Rameo would agree you did You did financially benefit from it because right? I'm hungry. If I don't have this loaf of bread, I have to buy another loaf of bread. So I think it's inclusive. If you hold Yeshmi Libakonamos, every time you're going to get physical pleasure from something, you always get financial benefit. However, sometimes I get financial benefit and I get pleasure. So that that's really what we're saying over here, that anytime I get pleasure, I'm also getting financial benefit. But if I, there's times when I get financial benefit, I don't care how not. And that's what the Rabbana are really saying over here. And the Dharma has nothing to do with financially benefit from it. It has to do with getting pleasure from it. And therefore, if I merely get financial benefit, so I wouldn't violate the nether. If I sold it, I wouldn't get violate the nether, maybe according to the Rabbana. We hold like a mayor anyway, that whether you physically get benefit or you financially get benefit, or basically the idea is financially getting benefit, which always happens when I physically get benefit from it. So therefore, uh, that's the nature of another, exactly like Hektish, and therefore, um, that's the understanding of the Dharam. It's not just physically getting benefit, it's also, it's really more like financially getting benefit. When I financially get benefit from something, I'm also, right, uh, a lot of times I'm also ple- getting pleasure from it. I mean, that also itself, itself is a financial benefit. Hope you enjoyed today's share. See you on the next one.